Hello students. Today we would discuss two theories explaining the possible rates at which evolution occurred. That is phyletic dadualism and punctuated equilibrium. Species possess three major properties, genetic isolation, reproductive isolation and ecological isolation, which has evolved over time. The rate at which speciation occurs depends on as to how quick the reproductive isolation occurred between the individuals and the number of species that arose per unit time. Two theories or models have been proposed to explain the rate of macroevolution, that is, phyletic gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. Phyletic gradualism. It is a slow and gradual process where new species arise from their ancestral forms. The transformation is slow and the selection and variations occurring are hardly noticeable over a short period of time. The figurative representation of gradualism is presented onto your right. As per the punctuated evolution theory proposed by Eldridge and Stephen God, the rate of speciation is not constant. The process occurs is in sudden spurts. There would be long periods where no change occurs and is known as the stasis period, depicted as horizontal lines in the figure. This is then followed by a sudden rapid change. We will discuss in detail both of these methods in the following slides. Phyletic gradualism. According to this model, evolution is a slow, steady and gradual process. There are small variations that occur depending upon the environment, the less helpful traits die, but it happens over a very long period of time, as shown in the figure here, where the morphological changes that are occurring in the organism are so gradual and slow that it can hardly be distinguished for a short period of time. The gradualism theory was proposed by Charles Darwin. According to Darwin, natural selection plays a major role in evolution. Individuals in a population undergo variations with time. The favorable variations are selected over the disadvantageous one with time. It is a slow and gradual, continuous process. When this continues for a very long period of time, ancestral species may gradually change into new species. The original species may undergo phyletic extinction, as seen in case of evolution of horses and man. However, this theory failed to explain as to when exactly a population became two species Fossil records too do not show a gradation from one life form to another. There has been no missing links. The punctuated equilibrium theory. It was proposed by Eldridge and Gold in 1972. Eldridge was a curator at American Museum of Natural History and Stephen Gold was a paleoevolutionary biologist. According to them, speciation occurred rapidly in geological time. The rate of evolution was not constant. 
gaps were noticed in fossil records are because the speciation event happened rapidly for the fossil record to appear continuously. According to them, there had been long periods of time where no or little change occurred. With time, then a suddenly rapid change occurred which led to speciation. The punctuated equilibrium embodies three major concepts stasis, punctuation, and dominant relative frequency. Stasis refers to a very long period of relatively unchanged form. There is substantial no change over millions of years. Punctuation is the radical change that occurs over a short period of time. Dominant relative frequency is the rate of these events occurring in a particular situation. The event of speciation is normally confined to small peripheral populations that have become separated from the bulk of the species. As these isolated populations are very small and transient, fossil records are not found. How does the punctuated evolution model works? The first stage, the stasis stage. Here, a population of organism would experience stasis, living, dying, and getting fossilized every few hundred thousand years. A very little observable evolutionary change happens during this period of time. Second, isolation. A small drop in a sea level would form lakes and isolates a peripheral small number of organisms in the population from the rest of the population. Next, due to genetic drift, a strong selection and a rapid change occurs in this small isolated population. Genetic drift influences their evolution. This is based on peripatric model of speciation. As only a small population had undergone a rapid change. No fossil representing transitional forms are preserved because of their relatively small size and rapid change in an isolated location. Next, when the sea level rises, the isolated population comes or reunites with the ancestral or sister lineage. In this combined population, expansion occurs. The larger population size and a stable environment makes evolutionary changes less likely. The formerly isolated population of the organism lineage may sometime outcompete the ancestral population, causing it to go for extinction. Next, preservation. The larger population size and a larger range move back to step one, that is stasis with occasional fossil preservation. The periods of stasis can be explained by stabilizing selection and punctuation could be explained by bidirectional selection or disruptive selection. Example for punctuated equilibrium is well documented by Williamson for the variations or changes in snail shell pattern in Lake Turkana in Kenya. The geological time period for occurrence of new species or lineages correlated with the changes in water level as shown in the figure on the right. As water level lowered, Larger lakes got fragmented into groups of small.
smaller lakes. The snail populations underwent genetic drift. Rapid changes occurred in these fragmented small populations. When the water level arose, these small lakes joined, bringing together the fragmented, isolated snail species. In this large population formed, the stasis phase starts again. The figure here highlights the comparisons between the two theories of speciation, gradual and punctuated. Thank you.